Good morning, good morning, good morning, Saints. Good morning, world. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, everyone. Um, so, so again, once again, Truth Overlies Daily is basically something where you can inbox me questions about the scriptures, questions about your beliefs, questions about faith, if you have doubts, if you have beefs with church, beefs with Christianity, beefs with the scriptures. Just want to give understanding. I don't know it all, but when I get questions, I like to do my research and find out answers. So um, thanks for tuning in once again. I try to do this daily. Of course, life happens sometimes, but I try to do this daily because Many people are looking for guidance and answers, and so I want to help as much as I possibly can. Um, real quick, I want everyone today to go to youtube.com um, and then search New City Assembly. Search New City Assembly and click that subscribe button because we need 100 subscribers to be able to get our own custom URL. So I appreciate you if you can do that. Also go to sospression.com, S-O-S-P-R-E-S-S-I-O-N.com. And that is my um, blog where I also put these Truth Over Lies daily videos. Um, and then if you're on Facebook, backslash New City Assembly, um, like us and subscribe there. So this question says, many women are afraid of coming on too strong at the beginning of the courtship. They're afraid of talking about marriage and children right away because they don't want to run the guy off by seeming thirsty. Many women will date a guy for years and never bring up marriage or children because they are afraid it will run him off. And I can understand this in secular dating relationships. However, I'm interested in knowing what a brother like you would say about this. You are someone who prepared for your wife in advance. At one point, should a godly woman be able to talk about things she needs to know to determine whether they will complement one another in marriage. Of course, she doesn't want to come off as desperate. So how would you suggest she bring up the topics in a way that won't make the guy think she is super desperate? What tips would you give a young, unmarried, believing woman about this whole topic? So this is a very interesting question to follow up from the question yesterday. Definitely appreciate it. Um, so First thing I always say is, you know, the Bible talks about how a wife is a, a treasure and a prize and a crown, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. The Bible talks about how um, a wife is a reward from the Lord. OK, so a wife is a reward. And so if a man doesn't realize that, then maybe he shouldn't have one if he can't, doesn't have the understanding of what a reward is and what a reward does for him, then why is why should he have one? You know, first of all, so as as a woman, you have to know your value. Um, and my wife always mentions, she says that diamonds don't jump into men's pockets, right? And so a man should find you because you're the treasure. You don't have to find a man. You shouldn't be desperate or thirsty for a man. You're a help me for that man, you know? You, you're there to help him. And part of that is a problem. Women have been um, told that their uh, women have been trying so hard to become equal with men and more powerful than men. They don't realize they're called to help a man. And so then, uh, you know, they don't realize they're supposed to help a man and then they don't they don't feel them. They don't see themselves as the treasure to a man. But if you really look at the scriptures, that you, then you should know that you are valuable to a man and you're a treasure to him and you're a crown to him and you actually help him move ahead in his purpose. And you should not be doing that before you're actually his wife. Um, so a woman has to know her value. Her father should have instilled it in her by the way that he took care of and valued her mother and her. Unfortunately, um, you know, we live in a generation that uh, where we have a lot of work to do in terms of the spirit of Elijah turning the hearts of the fathers to their children, specifically to their wives, because their wives are the mothers of their children. Um, so uh, while we're doing that work, we need to really um, make sure that women know who they are 
in the scriptures and we make this need to make sure that women know who they are to their father in heaven so they can have that confidence and know that they are a treasure from the inside um so uh, a woman that is that knows who she is is not desperate and the game game playing man you know the playboys just won't have access to her you know i, I use this analogy of a bugatti dealership i don't know i don't know anything about bugattis but my my sons always talk well they're they talked about they were into cars for a few months and they talked about Bugattis all the time. So that's just what came to my head. But, um, you know, if you own a Bugatti dealership, you're not, you know, you're not discussing things with with everyone. Right. <laughs> you know, if you own a car that's worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars, again, I don't know really what a Bugatti is worth. But if you own an extremely valuable vehicle, certain people are not going to come into that car dealership, you know, um, and anyone that comes into that car dealership is coming for a purpose. They're not coming just to, you know, play games um, and just sit there and chill. You know, they're coming with purpose and they come with resources. And so I use that analogy not to say that a man has to be a, a, a millionaire or a billionaire before he gets married, but a man should have a wealth of purpose, a wealth of um, intention, a wealth of vision, a wealth of goal, a wealth of, um, you know, even somewhat of a financial resource, right? Not necessarily have it stacked up in the bank, but have the work ethic. You know, when we got first got married. I didn't even have a job, right? But I had the will, <laughs> and I was able to get that job because I knew uh, what the purpose of of marriage was, and I knew that it was my job, and I had. I made no excuses. I simply went about my work. I was doing entrepreneurial stuff, but when that wasn't enough, I went and got a job. No, I wasn't trying to have my wife, you know, um, supply my needs. I know, I know, I'm the, I'm the, I'm supposed to be the leader, and so that's what I did. Um, and so again, it's not necessarily the man should have to has to be super wealthy to to approach a woman. But you have to have the wealth on the inside of you. And a woman that knows that she is a treasure is not desperate for a man. Um, a man with purpose is the one that will approach her. And a man has to come correct. Uh, if a man doesn't want a family, he can't approach a godly woman, right? You know, like there's no purpose in just in playing games and just having fun and just going on dates and just, you know, talking and all that stuff. What's the point? You know, that's just setting you up for emotional adultery is setting you up for fornication is setting you up for just sin and vanity like that's not the purpose and so, so a man should have a purpose before he even approaches a woman and if the woman is the one who has to bring up the purpose of the relationship the relationship should probably be eliminated or put into the what they call the, the friend zone the brother um you know the fellowship zone <laughs> and that's a beautiful zone to be in i i love my season of Single, singleness and um, just serving serving God with all the other believers, not trying to play a dating game with everyone, but simply just serving God. And that that is really the sweet spot, you right? Um, because really, what are you going to be doing when you're married? You should be doing the exact same thing, serving God together, okay? Um, so you have to develop that before you, uh, before you actually get a covenant marriage. Um, and you know, uh, a godly woman should be completely comfortable and content with being single until a real man that understands purpose, marriage, family, and life builds up the courage to come correctly and in the proper timing. And so you can have a great life serving God single. Like you don't need to be, you don't need a husband, right? There was plenty of people in the Bible that, that served God uh, single. Paul was one. Anna was another. There are people that serve God and they were they serve the Lord undistracted. They were able to change the world and turn the world upside down without being married. You can serve God and fulfill your purpose being married. You can also serve God and fulfill your purpose being unmarried. Whatever state you're in, you have to be content. Okay, so marriage is not really the only way to fulfill your purpose. Married, you can you can fulfill your purpose by making disciples. Um, not being married, you can also fulfill your purpose having children if you are married and raising up your children in godliness and and you can do both, right? You can have make disciples and make godly children, have godly seed, which is the purpose of marriage, actually. 
So when you really know the purpose of marriage and you really know the vision that God has for marriage, you're in no rush. Like you're not in a rush at all. And you can be single until the right person comes along. And so that's my encouragement for women who feel like, you know, they're thirsty or desperate. Don't be thirsty or desperate, but you do have the high standard because you are a treasure. And it's not it's not an ungodly thing to bring up the purpose of what the man claims to be doing. If you approach a man, if a man is trying to talk to you one on one, there's nothing wrong with declaring his intentions. When I first came to Serena, you know, I basically said I, put, I laid it out like, listen, I'm trying to get married around next year. I want to see if you're the one and we need to we need to talk about it um, and, and get it done. So, you know, that's how I approached Serena. I wasn't just trying to date and play games for her. I knew her beforehand. I knew her on a brother sister level. And so when it came time to make it, you know, um, towards that point, it wasn't any games played. It wasn't no dating for, you know, for 10, 15 years, not even three years. We wanted to get married within one year. We ended up getting married within, I think, 14 months. Kind of had some delays, but we got it done. And uh, marriage is not easy. And it's not something to play around with. It's not like the movies. Get the movies and the romance novels out of your head. This is for God, and um, it's a covenant until death. So even unbelievers know that people have been married for for long for long time to just surviving and doing life together. People that's not even saved understand that they need to stick together. Um, and so, how much more should should believers understand the purpose of of marriage? Because our God is the one that created it. So God bless. Um, be content. Um, set your standards high because you are a treasure. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Truth Overlies Daily. Make sure you like, subscribe, um, YouTube, Facebook, Self Expression. Holla at me.